Bienvenue, bienvenue qui salve, servus, grüß Gott für alle. Heute sind wir nicht im Studio, sondern sind wir hier auf der Arbeit. Ja, herzlichen Glückwunsch für jeder. Je suis très heureux que vous êtes là encore avec nous. Nous sommes mobiles aujourd'hui, pas dans le studio. To the end. Welcome back to the program, folks. This is Chris live in central Pennsylvania. Hey, how about that eclipse yesterday? <laughs> Who watched that? That was pretty exciting. Pretty uh, cool. I think some of you did get to watch the eclipse with me yesterday. Anyway, what's this? Um, Ned Banks, head of something, got, got fired after saying something bad about black folks. Wow. Bad mojo there, folks. How's it coming through? You're getting a good broadcast there? Hey, Val, how's it going? So you got thumbs up. Good to see you there, Val. And I hope everybody's having a good day wherever you find yourself. So, hey, Ants, uh, today uh, not really going to cover the news as much. I've been very busy this morning with a number of events and keeping uh, going. I had some trouble with my truck this morning. My SUV, uh, the uh, check engine light came on. That's never a good thing, as well as the track, which is related to the um, four-wheel drive. Also a bad thing. So, hey, Patrick. Yeah, so kind of a bad thing, so I'm uh, going to have to take that into the shop. That's unplanned and undesired right now. But hey, things do happen. That's life. Um, nothing ever lasts forever, that's for darn sure. Anyway, but um, worked on that, worked on a mailer this morning. Ken Aronson's here as well. Thumbs up. Good to see that, Ken. Oh, what's that? All right, that's one of those little Kubota golf cart sort of things to make a little bit of noise there. I want to make sure it wasn't going to keep working over there, but looks like he's leaving. Anyway, um, welcome back once again, folks. Wow, we just went from 13 to 22. Thanks for tuning in. It's good to see folks here. Two minutes into the broadcast, coming to you live from central Pennsylvania. Yeah, it is Tuesday. What is it today? The 9th? Does that sound about right? The 9th of April? I think that's what it is. Good Lord. Clock is ticking here, folks. Clock is ticking. Uh, 9th of April. And we are already in April. Can you imagine that? I know every year I keep saying, can you believe it's already February? It's already March. It's already August. And here we are in April of 2024. Could you ever imagine this? I mean, when I was a kid, I remember saying to myself, boy, I'll be old in the year 2000. <laughs> year 2000. That was 24 years ago. Mercedes in for transmission repair. Ouch, Marilyn, that sucks. I'm sure that will not be inexpensive. Hopefully you do a good job. I assume you took it to a Mercedes um, qualified dealer. Yep. Anyway, but uh, yeah. So yesterday was pretty epic. I mean, that was fascinating, the, the eclipse. Uh, the last time we had one in 2017, I really didn't pay much attention to it. I was busy, had other things going on, and I was outside when the eclipse actually occurred. But again, we weren't in the path of totality, so it didn't get pitch dark. So it just kind of got dusky. Same thing would have been the case yesterday had I not had the glasses so I could actually look at the at the thing. Yeah. Oh, not too painful. I'm glad to hear that, Marilyn. I have no idea what mine's going to cost. It's going to cost at least um, 2,000 Rand just to be looked at. <laughs> 1900 Rand just to have them look at the car. Well, maybe 1700 Rand. Let's say that. 1700 Rand just for them to diagnose the problem and then whatever it costs to repair it. Hopefully it's something minor like a sensor would be nice because the truck drove fine. It just no, no change in condition. It operated just fine, but you never know. So, um, anyway, hopefully that won't cost a bunch of money. I hate those unexpected costs. You plan on, you know, things, but that one kind of caught us off guard. So, anyway. Um, yeah, but uh, by the way, I did uh, draft an article. My article is friend or foe, whose side is South Africa on? And um, my first version needs some work. I did some editing of that on a break earlier this morning. And uh, I'm looking at where I'm going to submit this article. And hopefully, um, also I need to put some footnotes in, end notes in. I've put figures and facts in there, which I know off the top of my head. But I'm going to uh, go ahead and um, look up the actual numbers and make sure I get them correct. Hey, Gary Wild and Khan Engman, welcome to you. Wow, Hakan did not say what time it is. <laughs> Booted and suited. Definitely suited here, yep. And Charles Van Onslen, the voice of reason. Where is Polly? The brain's behind the operation. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, um, that eclipse was pretty interesting. And uh, I know that some of you actually got to see it. They fetched it. Oh, that's nice. That's pretty cool, man. And that's good service there. No, but some of you actually got to see it when I put the uh, glasses over the lens of the camera. Pretty cool. Surely it will change after the elections. Um, well, Charles, in my article, uh, without giving too many secrets away, I do mention that is it a qu question of U.S. This is about the U.S. relationship with South Africa, with South Africa not being a good friend of the ANC to the United States. And so the questions are, is this just electioneering or will there actually be some action against South Africa? And I think, honestly, it's just electioneering by Democrats or Republicans to show that they're doing something. 
probably by legislators who have nothing else they've done in their term. They're trying to find something they can latch on to. It would be my expectation. There's Hakan with the time. Thank you for that. <laughs> Is Pip Jacobs here? I missed that. Welcome, Pip. And welcome to everybody else out there. I hope you guys are doing well. It is Tuesday, April 9th, I think it is, of 2024. Uh, Pennsylvania's primary is just a number of days away now. Two weeks, in fact, two weeks. The 24th, or 23rd, excuse me, 23rd, yeah, I better get the date right. 23rd April is when the um, election takes place here in Pennsylvania for the primary. Of course, it's a foregone conclusion. Donald Trump is the Republican nominee and Joe Biden is the Democratic nominee for the respective parties. Uh, hey, Sue Walsh, Shawnee, welcome to you. Cars have been turned into money markets for big tech. Well, that's what's happening with these, these EVs, which are just a disaster. There's no way the world can operate on EVs. Well, the background looks really good. I'm looking at now the clouds and the trees back there. I was just trying to find some place that was in the shade because the sun was killing me. Colonel Chris Wyatt, the legend, the only person worth watching if you pursue candid truth and professional analysis. Appreciate all you do, Colonel. Well, thank you, sloth puppy. Buy a buy a donkey. Very kind of you. Appreciate that. Uh, yeah, the background is pretty lovely. Hopefully it's coming across well for you guys. But um, yeah, so April 23rd is my election. May 29th is South Africa's election. And November 5th is America's general election. So lots going on. India is having a six week long election session season coming up. Greetings from Finland. Listening while doing shopping. What kind of investment for do you have? You can talk about it at some point. Um, yeah, I'll, I won't tell you what it is or how small <laughs> small it is or what size it is, but I will talk about, I can tell you about the sort of things I invest in. So very quickly, um, Lori, we have a Finnish officer here in the, of course, uh, the program that I'm involved in. He's actually sitting in my session. So um, first time I met, a, I met a Finnish general. It's the first time ever. So yeah, so that's pretty cool. We had a Swedish general here in a previous version before they became NATO members. So yeah, it's pretty interesting to see a Finnish officer here. Pretty cool stuff. Anyway, um, investments, yeah, no, I, I started saving from a very young age. Um, I started saving in the form of savings bond, U.S. savings bonds from payroll deduction. So they took $25 out of my paycheck when I was a young soldier every month. So I at least saved 25 bucks every month. And um, that was good because I wound up spending my entire paycheck and had no money. And when I went to Germany. So for a period of about six months, I was tapped out all the time and my roommates were loaning me money. And I quickly realized that was a bad idea. So I changed my habits. I cut back on the number of Weizen that I drank and the number of trips to McDonald's that I made <laughs> and started putting some cash away, a little bit of cash to save money. And then when I went to back to university, I saved money there. I was able to buy a computer, an IBM PS2 without a hard drive because we didn't have hard drive at it then back in 1987. Also bought myself in 1988 a new car, a small, you know, um, car, nothing special but brand new car. So I bought a used one in the year prior. Anyway, so that's um, that's um, what it did and I actually saved money. When I left, sorry, when I left college I'd actually saved $1,300. When and where can we see the article? Well, Ken, that's yet to be determined. Um, I, as you can imagine, I've got a million things going on. So it'll be on Substack for sure, but I'm trying to get it published probably by the U.S. Army War College War Room. Uh, but I haven't had time to run it down. I'm busy with many other things. So hopefully I can get it to them. They'll get it published here um, before the end of April. It'll be good. Um, so you got to be careful when you offer articles up for publication. You send them multiple places. If somebody runs it, then someone else won't run it. So the War Room is a, a, a proper venue for it. War Room has... Um, the article is about 1,500 words, and I'm right at just under 1,500 words right now, and I'm doing some editing, so it's probably going to be a little bit less than that, and I could probably add something to it. But yeah, I'll let you know. But um, So I saved savings bonds, and I saved cash, and then I started investing in mutual funds, and um, no-load mutual funds. In other words, there's no fee for buying in the shares. And then eventually I started investing in individual stocks, and, and I followed Peter Lynch's principle for investing. Invest only in what you understand. You shouldn't invest in something if you don't understand how it works or how it makes money. That's just foolhardy. And that, of course, is what happens. People do that. They invest in things they do not understand, and they lose their butts. Uh, people that invest in cryptocurrency aren't really investing. Most of them have no idea how cryptocurrency works or what it's all about, and they don't understand the risk. It's speculative. It doesn't mean you can't make money in cryptocurrency, but um, it's like people investing in pork belly futures. A passenger in a Renault Quid, a rental, maybe. Yeah, oh God, Val, that Renault Quid is horrible. What a crappy car that is. No balls, no no horsepower. It's it's just a death trap on the road. Yeah, 
Renault Quid. What a mess. Yep, no, I remember that. That was the first car I rented on my trip back to South Africa in 2022. That was, um, picked that one up at OR Tambo, and the next morning the battery was dead. Oops, that was loud. It's the speaker system on post. Of course, they have a warning system here, so they can let people know about events. But yeah, that was, um, that Renault Quid, what an experience that was. Yep, I will say this, though. It had sufficient trunk space. The boot was big enough to put things in. It was pretty good. There's a lot of noise around here. Somebody running around with a construction truck or something. But yeah, eventually investing individual stocks, and I've been doing that for decades now. Um, I don't do much of it. I mean, it's not like I have a bunch of money sitting around to put in stocks. But I, you know, one thing you can do in, here in America is you can invest in what's called a dividend reinvestment program. So what you do is you get dollar cost averaging over time. So you buy a share. Now there were a number of programs that were started by nascent investment companies the past few years. A lot of them disappeared, but some companies still off this where you can just invest a little money. Cause I mean, who can afford to buy a share of Google? What's it going for $800 a share or something like that? Or $2,000 a share? You can't afford that. So you buy a fraction share or one share and then the dividends, if they pay it. Yeah, it sounded like 10 wheels. No, it was just the speaker system. Yeah, you can eat pork belly, but not Bitcoin. That's right. <laughs> I don't have a tweed jacket with elbow patches, Patrick. Physical bullion. Physical bullion is another approach. That's one way to do it. Um, I don't. I don't invest in physical bullion. No, I do not. Um, there's nothing wrong with that market. I wouldn't. I'm not offering advice to do it or not do it. It, it, it's, it has an effect, but you got to understand it. That um, bullion is a volatile marketplace. Gold, silver, and platinum prices go up. They go down. They go up. They go down. They go up. Down. Um, over time, you hope they grow. But a much better investment historically. I'm not saying now, but historically, it's been investing in the companies that actually mine those minerals, yeah, or those who produce the bullion and that sort of thing, because those companies have more consistent revenue stream and growth over time, whereas mining goes up and down. But if you have a diversified mining company that's not simply in gold or simply in silver or simply in platinum, then they can ride out the weather, weather the storm when one goes up and one goes down. So diversified portfolio is the key. You want to be smart about having things in multiple locations. You don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So, yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, so I, uh, but Peter Lynch uh, was the leader of the Magellan Fund at Fidelity back in the 1980s, and he turned that into the first ever, I believe, billion dollar mutual fund. And um, he did so with his investing principle that you only invest in things that you understand. So I've always followed that principle. And if you understand something, then you, that doesn't mean you should invest it, it just means at least you can understand it, you can take a look at investing in it. So Ronaldo just did something, said Zuma wins. I don't know what that's about. 30% in two years on bullion. Well, Ken, that's great. And if you'd done that when the hunts were cornering the silver market, you would have lost that money. Um, so you look, those, this, you'd say the same thing about stock market, but all things being equal, a well-run company over time will increase in value and give a return to shareholders. Uh, but you gotta be, you know, gotta be on top of those things. <clears throat> a lot of rain in PE. Well, we had a lot of rain here in early April, finally seeing some sun. But the clouds are still overcast today. Well, what a good break it was yesterday. And actually, it was a good thing having those clouds because I got some really cool photographs of the eclipse with a halo of clouds around it. It came out incredibly well. So I'm actually, I'm not disappointed that there were clouds yesterday. Got to see the eclipse. That was pretty cool. And uh, I can start making plans for the next one. I was really going to go to the path of totality for this one. But that was before the dates for this event were changed from the end of April, the last week of April and first week of May to now. So that affected it going there. And the other thing that affected is running for office. So I just couldn't manage to go up there for for the event. So that kind of sucked. But anyway, yeah, so. Um, well, that's that's good news, Ken. So Ken made 30% in two years on bullion and he's not super chatty. <laughs> Sorry, Ken, I could not resist that. I could not resist that. <laughs> what? He's running for president. What? Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna have to look at that story. That that's illegal. He is, how does the court? How does the court? Even, that doesn't make any sense at all. He's a convicted criminal, and the period of sentence is twelve. Are they gonna say that he served three months of it? So he only. But that doesn't matter. It's the conviction. It's not how much time he served, and it's five years after the conviction. He's also served two terms. He, uh, that's 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 nonsense. Now, he can be in Parliament. There's no preclusion of him being in Parliament based on on serving two terms because that's that's two terms for president. But it doesn't matter because he's convicted of a crime. So that doesn't make any sense. Wow, South Africa's election just got much more interesting, and it's going to be a mess. Why does my screen look so dark all of a sudden? 
check us on here. What's up all the way? Okay. All right. So, yeah, I don't understand what's going on there. I'm going to have to check into that, but uh, I didn't have time to check the news. So I don't know what kind of idiots are sitting in courts and telling people that he can do that. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That's just crazy. I wish I was at my PC. I could look that up right now, but I can't. I'm sitting here on my mobile device unable to do that. That's That doesn't make any sense at all. What kind of convoluted, twisted, nonsensical, communist argument came out of the court to claim that Jacob Zuma can run for office? It's a clear violation of the Constitution. So what's the point of the Constitution? This is why I ran for office here, folks. What's what's the point of a Constitution? I know your view on Super Chat. <laughs> yeah. Set aside. Well, they can't set aside the rules. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, Patrick, the IEC's rules don't matter. It's the Constitution that bars Jacob Zuma from running for office, not not the IEC. Section 88 and Section whatever the other one was, 67 or something like that, of the Constitution prohibit him from running for office, not the IEC. The IEC is just the body that said he's not eligible because it's in violation of the Constitution. So I don't understand what they're saying. They can, they're not IEC rules. They're not IEC rules. They are constitutionally mandated requirements under the Constitution, approved and voted on by Parliament in South Africa in 1996. Green knots must have been dropped in the right places. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Excuse me. There's bugs flying around here. Yeah, this is this is this is just taking a turn for. Uh, wow, this is taking a turn of bizarre proportions. Unbelievable. Um, this doesn't make any sense. I'm going to have to research this and, and, you know, before I go off and make a video, but I won't be able to do that till tonight. Yeah, the whole thing is rotten, of course, but it shouldn't come as any surprise. So if you have any confidence that the ANC will leave office in June, that just went out the window, too. Terms and conditions do not apply. <laughs> South Africa's constitution, the terms and conditions do not apply. That's good. Well, you know, that's why I'm running for office here. <coughs> hey, George, welcome from Heck Park. Um, the Constitution has been trampled on here by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, by the federal government, spies on its citizens with unjust uh, investigations, without reasonable cause, without warrants, with in clear violation of due process. Um, it's it's insane. And most citizens are just happy and dumb and don't care and don't pay attention to what's happening to them. And these aren't conspiracy things. We, we know factually what they've done. We can see it. It's reported in the press. Even the legacy media reports the transgressions of the federal government, the state government. For instance, the Commonwealth president or Commonwealth governor of Pennsylvania violated the U.S. and the Pennsylvania Constitution during the lockdown with his unconstitutional mandates. And no action was taken against him. He got away with it. This is why I decided to run for office. I cannot stomach this. I mean, what's the point of having laws if you simply don't follow them when they're inconvenient or they don't suit your needs? That's what the political left does. That's not what a that's not what a reason public and people do. They follow laws. We we write laws to protect people. Yes, Chris, that's already been brought up that Zuma can run. That makes no sense to me. I'll have to read up on it when I'm done here. That's just back crap crazy if you ask me. How can Zuma run? It's in violation of the Constitution in two different ways, two different clauses of the Constitution. The link to Putin, what does that matter? What does that have to do with Putin? What, is, what does Putin care about South Africa? South Africa does nothing for for Russia, nothing at all. They really don't. That's um, A lot of people think they do, but they do nothing for Russia whatsoever. My goodness. Um, I'm in the shade, but this isn't the optimal spot to be, I'll tell you that. I'm very distracted by people's conversations. And I'm also talking much quieter than I normally do because of other people being present, trying not to disturb them. But yeah, no, it's um, it's 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 it's, it's gobsmacking that he could run for office. People who really made a lot of money. The gold rush was selling groceries and shovels. Exactly. Thank you, Light Rain. That's exactly right. That's what I talked about. The mining companies that um, that are underlying and also the those downstream. It's like the money in diamonds isn't made from the diamond mining. It's made from the polishing and the and the production in gemstones or industrial use. That's where the money comes from. That's where the you get, the higher you get up the value chain, the better off you come. This is why you know, West Africans are so angry for so long about cocoa. Where well, we get screwed. Well, it's because you produce a commodity. Well, that's not fair, really. Then why don't you start making chocolate and cocoa and and um, start using the products that you produce instead of selling it as a commodity. And for decades, they simply were too lazy, too stupid, or too ignorant to figure out how to do that. Good Lord, now there's a plane flying over here. Right over my head, the prop, very noisy. So, 
obviously not restricted airspace here. But yeah, so for years, West Africans did that. And they complain, 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 complain. But it's not my fault that you haven't started a company like Toblerone or Milka or Cadbury. That's not my fault. You know, if you guys don't put the capital and the time, the effort into doing that, that's on you. Trans athletes banned from women's sports in Texas. Ah, trans athletes are banned from women's sports in Texas. Huge eucalyptus trees over a college road smashed through walls. What are you talking about there? Okay. Hey, Trevor, how's it going? Yeah, so, yeah, that's not my fault that they don't take the time to come up with a chocolate industry. That's on them. That's it's their failure. And they'll make all kinds of excuses. But um, there is chocolate now made in Ghana. It's not very good because they don't have the experience or expertise to make good chocolate. But that's also, it's not its own for making chocolate. It's to tropics. You have to have reliable electricity to keep it refrigerated all the time. Yep, that's the bottom line. My goodness, really distracting sound. 16 potholes out there, ridiculous roads. <laughs> Good evening to you. Zoopies was pardoned by Ramaphosa, did not serve 12 months, and therefore he cannot participate. No, 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 He was not pardoned by Ramaphosa. He was given medical compassion to leave prison by Shabir Sheikh. He wasn't pardoned. And it doesn't matter whether he served a sentence or not. You're not you don't you're not barred because you served a prison sentence. You're barred because you were convicted and sentenced to a prison sentence. So they're just lying out the backside right there. You're gonna have to deal with these people um, and expose them for the frauds they are. But Zuma will not be the president. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So you might as well get over that. But I'll tell you what, this decision today could be the end of the ANC. Uh, Patrick, citizen concern blew me off, has no interest in talking to me. I don't know what her issue is. Um, I wrote to her, never heard back from her. So, you know, that's rude in my book. I'm sure she gets a lot, but I wrote to her before she blew up, before she blew up. And, um, yeah, never heard back from her. I'm not going to hunt these people down. I don't have time for that. It's not a park. It's just, uh, it's just a green space. Um, no. No cherry blossoms. No cherry blossoms behind me. You're thinking this might be, but no, it's not. It's not a cherry blossom. Uh, looks like a dogwood, actually. Yeah. But um, yeah, there's no cherry blossoms. There are cherry blossoms here on post, but they've already done it. It's not. It's not a park. It's just green space on military installation. So there's a stream, a creek that runs through here called um, Latort Creek. Runs through just right behind me, about. 60 meters and um, so that's what's going on here so these trees are down hey Andre Allison welcome to you but yeah it's it's nice it's pleasant but it's kind of warm here Ugh, you know I don't, you know I like the heat yeah it is green space break into but the building that I'm sitting in front of is brand new the the Army War College just the construction was just finished in this they just occupied it for this academic year so it's their first year in the building it's Gucci it's really nice Guys who started the Grenada Chocolate Company's cooperative, um, they passed away, but the company still exists. Well, that's good news. Thank you, Light Rain, for that. Yep. Hey, Andre, how you doing? Yeah, so, um, yeah, this, so a bit of green space, I guess. Um, it's interesting because on the opposite side, there's a bank over there. I guess they have a lot of water, water runoff, and it must have been uh, eroding the banks because they've put tons of rocks out there. Uh, to cover it so it doesn't run away. It used to be one patch. Now I see one, two, three, four, five of them. So I don't know what's going on over there. It's clearly not for people to work on or sit on. It's just so, I don't know what that's all about. Oh, it was so nice and cool. Now it's getting so warm and humid. I'm going to take this jacket off, but kind of warm. But yeah. Anyway, in fact, let me take this jacket off now because it's driving me nuts. So I got too warm for that. Give myself a break here from the heat because I'm starting to cook inside this jacket. Anyway. Oh, that's much better. Yeah, the wind has hit me. Much better. Whew, it's getting kind of warm there. 61 people here, 40 likes. Thanks for that, folks. So you can see I'm rather subdued, uh, more subdued than I normally am. <laughs> get comfortable, we all are. Hey, Clive, how's it going? Um, yeah, um, sure, why not get comfortable? But uh, I feel a lot more comfortable. I can sit back and take my shoes off and drink a cool beverage, loosen the tie. Now I got to go back to work here shortly, so I got to keep the tie on. But um, then I gotta go knock on doors later on, but the tie will probably come off for that. So, 
It's just a little less formal. So as an aside, um, look at the eclipse as hard work. I suggest next time take a mirror, reflect the sun into a wall, and bam, you see the great colors. Yeah, it's a good thought, Andre, but um, this was impromptu. It was unplanned for. Um, and I really was going to abandon the whole process because um, there was you couldn't see the sky because the, the thick cloud cover was comprehensive. And then I decided to just go ahead and schedule it anyway for the heck of it. But um, yeah, I also wasn't at home. I was here, so I have to deal with what's at hand. So I actually um, went to a spot where there's a concrete, um, I don't know what you call it, concrete. It's on the, the way up the steps. It's on the side there. So I put my tripod on there. And this phone is too heavy for this tripod. <laughs> so I learned it a long time ago, but uh, it's a little small handheld tripod. But um, it's, the phone is supposed to be up in the air, about six inches, not that far, but it just slides down. So, anyway, um, Ghana could buy Hershey's as its stock is down. <clears throat> cool that you get to meet a Finn, Chris. Um, your strategy sounds solid. I've just been getting started with passive low cost. Yeah, no, um, Ghana could not buy Hershey. Um, Hershey stock is not down. Hershey stock is up. I, I have. Uh, couple of shares. That's one of those dividend reinvestment plans I bought years ago. Uh, folks are leaving, so I should have a little piece to myself here now. But um, no, um, Hershey is a rather expensive company to buy. Shares are, I don't know what they cost. They're a hundred some dollars a share last time I looked. Yeah, animals do behave strangely during the eclipse, especially Homo sapiens. <laughs> They're the most puzzling of all of God's creatures when it comes to these things. But you know, uh, of course, we know that uh, eclipses were a big part of all sorts of things, like for instance, you know, Neolithic peoples, Stone Age peoples, they would um, devote entire religions of faith, the Druids and others, to the, the planets and their cycles, and eclipses played a big role in that. I mean, the whole purpose of um, Stonehenge it has to do with celestial bodies, you know, right? So it is fascinating, to say the least. Um, yeah. But yeah, so uh, Lori, um, as far as the strategy, um, yeah, the smart thing is to invest in things you understand. So, um, you have to remember this, though. Here's what you have to do when you invest, okay? You have to invest in a place. you got to have some safe investments so stuff doesn't go anywhere. If you're going to invest in things more risky, you have to invest in things that if you lose, Aztecs and Mayans, that's correct, yep. Yeah. Uh, if you lose, you won't miss it. Now, in order to get to that point, you've got to have a little bit of success plus some discipline and do some investing over a period of time, unless you happen to be in wealth to begin with. But if you don't have anything, like I had nothing. Started from scratch, absolutely nothing. Not a penny, two nickels to scratch together, two rand to scratch together. So, um, started very small, just a few dollars, and learned to understand risk, learned when it was appropriate to take risk. Now, that's not perfect. Nobody's a perfect investor. Doesn't mean I haven't had bad days, but um, yeah. Yep, so if you do that, um, never risk something that you have to have. In other words, if you need that money to pay your mortgage or to buy a car or to pay for hospital fees, then you don't risk it because it's not gambling. If it's gambling, you might as well go to the roulette wheel and, or play blackjack or, you know, or something like that or buy a lottery ticket because that's just gambling. But if you're investing and you're smart, you can invest in companies that are well run, solid, in a reliable industry. You know, another thing Peter Lynch is always big about is investing into consumer product companies, you know, that companies that are going to, people have to buy. I mean, look, when there's a recession or prices are down or there's a depression or something like that, people still buy toilet paper. They still buy toothpaste. They still buy petrol. They still buy absolute essentials. They might not buy a new mobile phone. They might not go on a trip somewhere. They won't take a cruise necessarily. So those industries suffer, but people always buy the essentials or steal them if you live in Chicago, New York, or California. But people always buy the essentials. And that's why sometimes it's a smart move. But also I think another smart move is get involved in companies that are very successful at reinventing themselves and understanding the next wave and jumping on it. So, I mean, if you made buggy whips for the horses, for, you know, wheel buggies, wagons. Um, you can only do that for so long. If you were a wheel maker for Conestoga wagons or for the one the Trek boars used to go over the Drakensberg, um, you're only employed for so long. Eventually, those things don't exist anymore. Soap, candles, and matches. Yeah, but you, when you buy staples, you also got to buy into things that have a potential for a better profit margin. Um, soap, candles and matches now soap in the format of laundry soap that has a high margin so that's something you might do like um, uh, 
Clorox or a company like that. You've been very busy teaching, consulting, Eclipse viewing, running for office, the Vets Club, and your channel daily and multiple platforms. Only how you ever have. I don't have a subdued daylight rain. It's quite exhausting, and it's uh, it's funny because uh, last night um, one of my political opponents um, made a dig, and I I inferred that it was kind of directed at me in part, if not in its entirety, talking about you know um, saying it was funny because the person said that well, you know. Candidates keep telling you who they are or who, where they've been, what they've done, which is something I do. You need to know that to know where I'm coming from. But it should be about what you're going to do. Well, I would argue it's about what you're going to do and what you are doing. And actually, I talked about South Africans last night and people in the UK. I said, you know, as a journalist, uh, when I traveled to South Africa on that first trip, I had 30 days in country and I traveled thousands of miles by plane and 5,000 kilometers or thereabouts. And I held 17 meet and greets with my viewers. Those things took hours of time of coordination plus the actual execution of the event. And why did I do it? Because I listened to people, I talked to people, and I heard what they had to say. And um, you know, that's part of being a representative if you're responsive to your constituents. And so they ask how you're gonna be responsive. I said, well, I'll, I'll be happy to meet with people. I'll do town halls, social media, email, all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's, I understand the question, but I understand where the question's coming from because there's a perception that representatives aren't there. For instance, our current representative was um, accused of not caring about a local issue. But I also pointed out that people, voters have to be realistic. In our district, there are 65,000 constituents, includes children, and there are 47,000 registered voters. There's no way, and there's also 19 jurisdictions of boroughs and townships. There's no way that any representative could go to every event that some voter thinks is of importance. Little League baseball throughout the first pitch, township meeting, borough meeting, this meaning that meaning. You have responsibilities in the legislature. You have to attend sessions. You are part of committees. You have to attend those committees. And those things can run all day, each your entire day up. But the difference with me is that um, when my day's done, it's not done. Yesterday, I left consulting at the War College, drove, went to the Veterans for Foreign Wars, met with our district headquarters folks. Um, before that, I coordinated about a hire of a new club manager with the other board members. When we finished, I coordinated again, then I rushed off, got to my debate, it wasn't really a debate, it's more like a canvas form, um, with local area folks on Facebook, and I got there with two minutes to spare, no time to get all comfy, and you know, I just threw my earplugs in and turned my, launched the Zoom and went into the session, and did that until about nine o'clock in the evening. At nine o'clock in the evening, I stopped, I sat down, I went through the map and looked for places that I hadn't been that are near where I've been campaigning, and came up with a list, made that list in a spreadsheet, printed it out. Then also I had to adjust my next mailer card and make some changes to that because it was too wordy, shorten it, made it simpler, and still convey an effective message to get people to vote for me. I did that. Then I sat down and finally had dinner at 10 o'clock last night. When I had dinner at 10 o'clock, I finished, and normally I go back on the computer, but last night I decided to take a break. I fell asleep with the TV on, and I woke up a little bit later, turned it off, and then I got up at 5 o'clock and started all over again this morning. Revised that card, sent it out to someone to get their view on it. Um, I also took care of the hiring thing by sending a message out to people. It's, and that's, look, I'm not complaining. I'm just telling you, that's what I do. Um, I remember at the VFW last fall, I had a gentleman who was complaining about things there and he wanted to talk to me and I listened for 45 minutes and all I did was complain about things and he offered no solutions and he complained about things I had no control over and he complained, he says, well, this is like, this is like, this is like, yeah, what well, was like that under the previous club manager? You didn't complain then, nothing has changed. So why are you complaining now? The only difference, the only change is that I'm now the commander. Is it because nobody listened to you? No, it's because, you know, people are running their mouths and they act like this had all just happened, but it had been going on before. That's why we had a change in leadership, to try to affect change. But 45 minutes of my life spent talking to that guy. I talked to a couple, a, couple, a few days ago, and uh, husband and wife, and the husband's like, well, you know, uh, so-and-so came here 15 years ago and said the same thing. The other person came you know, eight years ago and said the same thing. And they went right into office and did exactly the opposite. What do they promise us? I said, well, I'm not making you any promises other than I will not compromise my principles. I will, from time to time, in the legislature, be forced to consider compromise on bills because it's politics. You can't simply, you know, you can't simply uh, say no, no, no all the time. Sometimes you have to, but you don't compromise your principles. Um, so, but I spent a half hour talking to those people. I don't know if I got their vote, but that's, that's not what the point was. I talked to them and listened to them. So 
it was good to hear their opinions. Um, I listen to a lot of people, so anyway. But at the end of the day, you are the representative, you are the leader. You can listen to people, but you have to make that decision. Uh, 47,000 registered voters don't get to vote. It doesn't work like that. Uh, hey, Jax, how you doing? Uh, what did, um, I know what happened. Uh, I wonder how much judges pay. Yeah, shocking, another criminal stand. Exactly, and I'm going to I'm gonna tear into that. Ronaldo made a short. I'll do a quick look at it. I'll probably come back out and do a short, but then I will probably do a, a deep analysis video. Maybe tonight, maybe late tonight, I might even do a broadcast. Hey, Patrick just gave 14 Rand. Let's get an Alfred Watt, 14 Rand. Thank you for that very much, Patrick. I do appreciate that. That's right, kind of you. 51 likes, 57 people currently here, and we got a Rand. By the way, Patrick, after YouTube does their calculation, that comes out as 76 cents, in case you're curious. <laughs> 76 cents. Hey, uh, oh, is Myra here? I didn't see Myra. Yeah, Jax has been away for a while. Hadn't seen her. Um, so I hope she's well. Good to see her back here again. But um, yeah, um, so uh, indeed. Uh, good. Uh, no, Jax, I'm just exhausted um, running around. Who's blocking my comments? Jan, no one's blocking your comments. You must be typing something YouTube doesn't like. No moderator's blocking your comments. So again, Save the beard. You want me to save the beard or shave the beard, Matthew? Is your typing not up to task here? You got a little typo there? Anyway, but um, yeah, it's as simple as that. When you uh, ultimately have to make the decision, you're the one that makes the decision. So you can't, you can't satisfy 47,000 registered voters. You can't satisfy 65,000 residents with every decision you make. I mean, for instance, if I say that I'm in favor of transgenderism, I'm going to piss off the majority of people in my district. If I say I oppose transgenderism, I'm going to make a lot of them happy, but piss off the other people. It's, you know, the reality is that you have to make the decisions that are in the best interest of your constituents, state, and the country. And that's why we elect people to office. I was asked a question last night about a Republican representative who's proposed a bill that would prevent warehouses, complexes from being put in if unless the voters approve it well i mean that is a very cumbersome thing first off voters only vote twice a year so you would cripple capitalism i didn't mention this but you would cripple capitalism by forcing people to have to submit a ballot and a lot of money and time and effort goes into that there's a reason why we have a republic and a representative republic you elect people to represent your collective needs that's the purpose of it look i'm not opposed to ballot initiatives we have them all the time in states you know in uh, california they had a ballot proposal in colorado to approve um, you know legalize weed not for everyone agrees on what's good for the country that's the problem r1 yep not everyone agrees on what's good so that's the difference and that's the major um issue between leftists and rightists today is that uh the political left has lost its mind and believes in absolutely bat crap, crazy things that make no sense whatsoever. They have abandoned the Democratic Party, but kept the title of the Democratic Party. It's uh, it's a shame. Christine, hey, where you been, man? Where have you been? Anyway, uh, there's Hendo. Okay, time for some R and R. As soon as you get, uh, I've had to scale back a bit recently. It's done me. Oh, well, I'm glad, Jax. I'm glad that that's refreshed and recharge your batteries. Uh, scaling back, no, that's not going to happen. Uh, and that's you know that's that's the funny thing in this race. <laughs> this is weird. So I used to be the youngest guy in the room most of my career because I worked at very high levels even when I was junior. But in this race, I'm the oldest candidate. Um, the closest opponents are two and then four, two or three or four or five years behind, behind me. The other one's 20 years behind me and the other one's almost 30, well, 30 years behind me. So I'm the oldest candidate here. And it's funny because I'm the one with the energy. I'm not that they don't have energy, but I'm the one with that does this every day. That's why one of the candidates last night was, was implying that, you know, that um, people talk about what they've done is it matters what they do. Well, what I do is now, well, how you're engaged. Well, <laughs> people have no idea how many hours I devote to veterans causes and to things in the community here. Also, you know, offhanded comments by, by uh, candidates like, well, you know, um, and also by questions. One of the people asked a the question, they said, well, you know, only one candidate ever came to these township meetings. That's not true. That's not true. For instance, the township meetings that person's talking about, I went to those township meetings, but the person didn't know who the hell I was. So uh, I'm sorry that you didn't know who I was when I went to those meetings, but um, I don't go to those meetings to go up and go, hey, hey, look at me, I'm over here. No, I go to those meetings to hear what's being said. 
and to raise questions. Um, and I was at the most recent meeting for our township, for instance. But uh, it's, you know, people have very parochial interest. And the group last night was, I'm not attacking the group because they're a good group. I appreciate what they're doing. But they do have very parochial local interest. And the interests are much broader than that. In fact, last night we were asked a question about regional cooperation. And um, the regional cooperation to me is cooperation from outside your district further in the state and neighboring states and maybe the national government. But the question was regional cooperation. Then the moderator asked the question saying regional cooperation as in the townships and boroughs within the district. That's not regional cooperation. That's inter-district or intra-district um, cooperation. So that should be no question on that. It's a no-brainer. So I talked about regional cooperation and said, that, you know, what you're talking about is part of it, but the bigger picture here is that, for instance, here in central Pennsylvania, we have a, a electricity project for gravity-fed water drawn from the Susquehanna River to recharge and to turn turbines and then release back into the river, and that was going to have ecological consequences, not in my district, but in the district just below mine, but it does affect the quality of life and our environment here. But the electricity is not for Pennsylvanians. It was for Maryland because they're not producing enough electricity. So they expect us to take the hit ecologically while they get a free ride. Now, we get money off of it, but we are the ones that have to deal with the, the uh, ecological impacts of it. In addition to that, we have all kinds of restraints and restrictions and taxes and fees that are applied to our water because we're part of the Chesapeake Bay estuary and the water goes down there. Well, some of these things are absolutely ridiculous and over the top. They're unnecessary, but we get hit with these charges for a, by a neighboring state. In addition to that, we are the country's largest export of electricity. 20% of all electricity exported from one state to another within the United States comes from Pennsylvania, one-fifth. There are 50 states, and 20% of the electricity that's shipped out of a state comes from here. So as a consequence of that, we produce a lot of carbon dioxide. Well, the other states have abandoned their coal mines, and David Suber says 20 bucks. Here's a donation campaign. Delete a couple of my comments made here. Hope and pray for you when thanks for all you do. Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Well, I mean, I won't make it to my campaign. It's kind of you to do that, but my campaign money's coming out of my pocket, so I guess it's it's a wash. But 20 bucks is awesome. Thank you for that. But um, I lost track of what I was talking about there. So, um, yeah, so the electricity thing and then the water, uh, the runoff, and then there's other things. This regional greenhouse gas initiative, which Pennsylvania has uh, signed up for, but has been declared unconstitutional the way it's being executed. So what happens is um, these other states abandon their, their electricity plants and then they look to us for electricity and then we get hit with carbon tax because we're producing the carbon dioxide. Well, they can crow about how green they are, but that's just because they've shifted the burden to us and then they tax us for the burden they put upon us. Talk about a double whammy. These people in the Northeast are not producing electricity, so they're turning us to produce electricity and then they sanction us for producing electricity. Uh, talk about a win-win for them and a lose-lose for us. This is bad for Pennsylvania. It's bad for Pennsylvania. It's for the Commonwealth, but good for Connecticut, good for Rhode Island, good for New, um, for New Hampshire and New York, but not for us. And so those are regional issues to me, not simply the things here. I hope I'm not boring people with this story. So disgusting as of English and German, what is going on in Europe? My uncle's... Oh, yeah, forever. It's crazy what's going on in Europe. Celebrate. Oh, that's, oh, by the way, that's David Suber's 10th Super Chat. Thank you for that 10th Super Chat, brother. Really appreciate that. I'm hiding my candles. <laughs> uh, I've been following new vertical wind turbines with new blades. Okay. Vertical. Aren't they all vertical? I don't think they work horizontal. I suppose you can make them horizontal if you bent the blades up away and they would still turn like this. But I think they're all vertical. <sighs> yeah, it was a nice super chat. Thank you, Debbie. I agree. 20 bucks. Yeah. Anyway, I've been, look, I don't know if you guys have been seeing this, but in Ronaldo's groups, um, I keep seeing, it was in Telegram now, it's in WhatsApp, where these people are pushing some kind of scam, modal M509 or something like that. I keep reporting the spam and then deleting it, but it keeps coming back. Old client that worked for a company in Pennsylvania, says Christine. Okay. Transylvania. No, it's not Transylvania. It's Pennsylvania. Now, of course, um, for those of you who don't know Latin, Silva is the forest. So this state was founded by William Penn, who had the freedom from the English government to found a religious sanctuary. And people came here to celebrate their faith without persecution. So William Penn founded Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania means Penn's woods or Penn's forest. Because the state is a Washington forest, and it was a Washington forest when the Europeans came here. 
Now, the interesting thing about William Penn, other than the recent nonsense in which the National Park Service was going to take his statue down from William Penn's house, the thing about William Penn and about, about his experience is that he was a righteous man who believed in justice for all. And unlike most other folks, when he took over administratorship of the Philadelphia area and the Pennsylvania colony, he did not steal land. He did not fight. He went to the Lenape Indians and he purchased the land. And then they set courts up so that if any Lenape felt aggrieved or Anglos felt aggrieved, they could go to court. The Lenape Indians had the same rights in court as the Anglos did, and their cases were heard and tra treated justly. Um, he learned local Lenape languages. Um, he allowed religious tolerance and religious freedom. He was an absolute brilliant human being and a brilliant American. Of course, this is before America ever existed, but an American. And they want to take his statue down, this um, woke garbage that attacks anybody whose skin isn't sufficient pigmentation, as if there's some sort of evil people. When William Penn is one of the most enlightened and wonderful human beings to grace this planet. And these scumbags want to take his picture down because he's an old white guy. Well, that is racist. And that is bigotry of the highest order. And it should be called out each and every time we come across it. That's absolutely what should be done. Remember that story a few months ago when I talked about this, when they wanted to take down William Penn's statue from William Penn's home. It was his home. And the statue's erected out there. And the National Park Service was going to remove it. These people are disgusting. They need to be removed from government. They have no business overseeing our nation's heritage, our parks, our monuments. They have no business being anywhere near them because their objective isn't to honor America and its legacy and its history. It's to corrupt America's history, corrupt America's legacy, and lie about America to achieve racial bifurcation and the destruction of the current order. That's the problem. All right, so... Uh, Menage Kwa says, what military leaders do you admire the most and why? Not WM Penn people, huh? Who is persecuting you? Spam seems to be reaching biblical levels on all platforms. Yeah. Correct these terms. Okay, um, so I don't know what the question is. Who's persecuting you? Uh, what military leader? That's a tough one. Somebody's pregnant and waiting their baby. I just got a TikTok message. Uh, Menage Kwa, the National Park Service was going to remove it. This is a couple months ago. I covered this. I covered this. Um, so, um, military leader that I admire. Well, it's a tough one. That's a tough one. Um, I don't really think of in terms like that. I mean, admire or impressed by. I'm impressed by Attila the Hun and Genghis Khan and Kublai Khan. I'm impressed by Alexander the Great. I'm impressed by um, a number of, of military leaders. But I mean, admire, I don't know if I admire them. 50 years ago, the Matrix did American history, and William Penn was one of those we learned about. Well, that's cool, Trevor. Wow. Here comes that prop again, flying back the other. Another one flying. That's a different one, yeah. That looks like a Beechcraft. Anyway, yeah, so, I mean, who was persecuting Mr. Penn? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I got your question. No, uh, R1, um, the, the Church of England was persecuting Catholics and um, others, Anabaptists and folks who were not part of the Church of England. So it was founded as a religious colony. Maryland was the same way. It was founded for religious purposes. Um, and so William Penn wrote, drafted the first laws, the first so, sort of constitution for Pennsylvania. And he's a great man. Yep. Absolute great man. Yeah. Pat and Rommel and Robert E. Lee. Uh, those are good choices, but each has their flaws. Um, each has their flaws. Yeah, Rommel was arrogant. Patton was completely arrogant and also disrespectful, uh, and Robert E. Lee betrayed America. Uh, great leader, also uh, believed a little too much in his own press. So all have their, you know, nobody's perfect. Wait a second, I got a freaking floater in my eye again. I hope it's not torn. Damn. Anyway, um, interesting, useful to learn the play, history of place. Yeah, no, it is R1. I mean, and I do that. So for those we showed recently on here when I went to Blood River and uh, showed the um, video from when I was at Blood River. I recorded it. It was very sunny and hot that day. I also went to um, Isan Luana and to Works Drift during that period of time. But yeah, um, anyway, so eh, people should pay attention to history. History matters. We all have flaws. It's not the basis for democracy. Not, well, exactly. Is that not the basis of democracy? Yeah, well, I don't know if it's based on democracy, but it's the basis for admitting people are human and they make mistakes. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So nobody's perfect. Nobody will address every need. 
spider there. <laughs> Get over there, buddy. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> it's a weird looking red spider. I don't want him over here. <laughs> Stay there, buddy. I think he's kind of frozen in space now. I kind of messed him up with that big wind. So 61 likes and 67 viewers. $20.76 with David Supers. $20 plus the um, was it Patrick who sent the other 14 rand, I think it was. Yeah, so the world is not perfect, and we all come and go, folks. And I'm reminded of that every day when I go in this building. General, It's named after General Collins, who was a very successful military leader and led more units than most anybody else, you can imagine. And they have all the flags of him there. And I'm looking at the photographs of people in the jungles of Burma in World War II and people on Iwo Jima in World War II and people in Korea. And, you know, and, and if it's World War II, these people are all dead. And in pictures of the Spanish-American War, they're, they're all dead, long dead. You come, you go. You should take the time you have and make the most of it. Enjoy it if possible and make a positive contribution to mankind. That's what it's all about. I mean, you know, nothing wrong with worshiping your deity and being faithful and being respectful. People should do those things. But you've got to make the most of your time here. It is precious. I mean, I, w I would never imagine I'd be sitting here with this full beard a beard at all with these incredibly long mustache. I mean, look at it. those hairs come all the way down here. And they'd be longer if I hadn't trimmed them. But I never imagined that. And it'd be this gray. The good news is I still have the hair. Thank goodness for that. I was worried I might go bald there. <laughs> but, you know, time passes, folks. You have to value and appreciate life more. As you say, it's sacred and we're all living in borrowed time. Exactly, Debbie. We are all on borrowed time. Yep. Unless I can put my consciousness into a computer like Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> when we reach the singularity <laughs> yeah anyway so I remember the whole that whole episode where he's like you know what's this KBB well that's uncle uncle so and so he was killed by a badger <laughs> killed by a badger it's too funny Trevor Bush has just given 200 rand thank you for that Trevor he jumped our super chat total up over 31 bucks thank you for that US that is that's U.S. dollars. We need to harvest those good genes here, says Debbie. Well, <laughs> there might have been a time that uh, I might have been available for that sort of thing. <laughs> Sasquatch hair. What do you mean Sasquatch hair? That is good, thick, nice hair, man. And I'm not a hair sweet person. You're not going to find a hairy chest or hairy back, Mary. That's not the case here. Not the case here. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Debbie says... Uh, Trevor, nice one. Yeah, it is nice. Super chat. Thank you for that. Boy, these planes are flying. I guess because the weather's got people out. Another plane flying again here. There's, just, there's airfields near here all over the place. Pennsylvania was a pioneer in aviation. A lot of people don't know that. We used to have um, a number of aircraft companies that were here. William Penn was a great person. I'm surprised that people are going after him. He was also anti-slavery. What bad points about it? He's white. He was white. And they're morons. They're racist morons. Menashe He's white. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. Why, why would Black Lives Matter activists throw blood paint on the 54th Massachusetts, a colored regiment in the Civil War? Because they're idiots. Because they think it's white guys. Because they hate white people. Because they're just racist. It's stupid. I mean, quite frankly, I mean, that sort of nonsense, I learned how stupid that is when I was a little boy. I mean, when I was, what, seven years old or six years old? I mean, I was seven years old, maybe. And I was attacked in a housing development with 300 families, three white, the rest were black. And I was attacked, thrown to the ground, a skinny little kid that I was. My knees were, or my shoulders were pinned to the ground with this, this teenage black kid's um, knees into my chest, held me down to the ground, pulled a switchblade out, opened it up, and ran it across my throat, trying to terrify me, telling me I'm going to kill my honky ass. Um, so did I learn that black people are evil? No, that guy's a jerk. That guy was a jerk, man. That's why he did that. His brother was my friend. We were getting fine. We were out there bouncing the ball off the steps. So, yeah, did I learn, you know, people are just, well, some people are just simple. Some people are simple-minded. It's very frustrating. But forces are at work that seek to divide us, to seek to bifurcate us. And create these fractures, these fissures, this division amongst people. What do most people want? What do most people want? Most people want to be loved or appreciated, right? But beyond that, their basic needs. They want a, a home. They want an income so they can survive. 
they want to provide for themselves and for their family if they have a family. If they don't have a family, they usually want a significant other. There are exceptions. There are people that don't want to be around other people. But they want a significant other, whether that's another man or another woman, whether you're a man or woman, I don't really don't care. You want a partner. And most groups, most folks want offspring. You want to raise them. You want to be able to be responsible for them. You want to live your life and worship and, and enjoy your life. So how does that make people different? They're not. People learn these terrible, evil concepts from people around them. People around children are the ones that point out, that's a white kid. That's a black kid. Black people are like this. White people are like this. And Indians are like this. And Jews are like this. That's what bigots and racists do. Children aren't racist. They aren't bigoted. They don't see any difference. Many's the time I've seen little black children adopted by white parents and they love their parents. They don't see color. They don't even know there's a difference. They just know that that's the person who gave them comfort and took care of them. That's the person that fed them. That's the person who hugged them. That's the person that comforts them when they're in pain. They don't care what their color is. They don't care what their origin is. They don't care whether they came out of that person's womb. That's the nature of humanity. Yeah, it does look like cherry blossoms, but they're not cherry blossoms. That is how things are supposed to be. But that is not the world we live in. We have a world in which racists like the New York Times create things like the 1619 Project to racially divide America with lies about the history of America. America's original sin was slavery. What a crock of nonsense. When the United States declared its independence on the 4th of July, 1776, had we banned slavery, we would not have had a country. But let's just say we did it. Let's say we did it. Slavery was present in almost every colony at the time, including the mid-Atlantic and northern colonies, which people like to clean, conveniently forget, but they had slavery too. They blame it all on the South, but that's a consequence of the antebellum period when the cotton gin was created, and that made it profitable for using slaves to pick cotton. So before, the, the problem wasn't picking the cotton, the problem was picking the seeds out of the cotton. You have to get the seeds out of it. And the cotton gin would run the cotton through, remove the seeds, and then you had the cotton which you could use. That made it incredibly profitable. And that meant the number of slaves needed in the South grew exponentially in order to harvest more cotton. But before that, slaves were everywhere. So if we had banned it, we would have been the first country in the world to ever ban slavery. So how is it our original sin? Shouldn't it be the original sin of mankind? And any scumbag, race-hustling piece of human feces that calls it America's original sin is exactly what I just described them as. America would have been historically unique in that aspect. So we are punished and shamed because we weren't the first country to create itself and ban slavery? That's nonsense. America, from its very inception, sought to ban and end the institution of slavery. But it wasn't practical. We broke away from England, and had we banned slavery at the outset, we would never have had a country. We would never have had a country. It's as simple as that. It's the same reason why I have a unique system of governance, while we have supposedly separate and co-equal branches of the federal government, and we have states who are sovereign and their rights should be protected. That's, what's, that's why we have that's why we have the Electoral College, because if you didn't have that, small states would never have joined the Union. They never would have ratified the Constitution. Delaware would not have joined the United States. Maryland would not have joined the United States. Now picture the United States without Maryland, Delaware. That's kind of a bit of a gap. So you go from Virginia through Maryland, you have to share your passport, enter back into Pennsylvania, you have to share your passport again. <laughs> All people want is clearly defined by Maslow. Yeah, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So that's my thing. And I'll tell you this right now, folks, while I desire to be the state representative for the 92nd District of Pennsylvania, I do not need to be the state representative to reach self-actualization. I do not need to be a member of Congress to reach self-actualization. I do not need to be president of the United States to reach self-actualization. I've reached self-actualization on a number of times in my life and achieved, met my wants, desires, and needs. I don't need those things. I'm doing it because that's who I am and it's a calling. It's, it's an important thing. And somebody, the right character, with the integrity, with the enthusiasm, and with the understanding of knowledge should do it. Where's the line between challenging the narrative of history and being a race hustler? Uh, well, when you lie about race, that makes you a race hustler. If your intent is to raise a racial issue that's non-existent or that you pervert or distort, that makes a person a race hustler, uh, I'm the one that coined that phrase. I'm sure many people use it, but I, I coined the phrase race hustler. I'd never heard it before. Anyway, so um, that's my point. So the 1619 Project are a bunch of race hustlers. They are seeking to undermine American history and rewrite it by lying about it and claiming that slavery was our original sin. It's utter nonsense. It's utter nonsense. 
we should give, be given credit for the first territorial expansion of the United States, prohibited slavery into perpetuity in the Northwest Territory. With the Northwest Ordinance Act of 1787, we prevented slavery into perpetuity. That's an incredible achievement. No country had done that. Not legally. They might have done it in practice, but we did it. We did it. We did it. And then we banned the importation of slaves in 1806, in effect in 1808. And we are the only country to ever fight a civil war to end the institution of chattel slavery. Only the United States did. We lost 700,000 Americans in that conflict. Yeah. So they need to stop lying about America. Now, does that mean America didn't have bigoted, racist legislation that denied some people their rights? Of course, that's not true. That did happen. Of course, that did happen. The Democrats controlled the South and many states in the North, and they imposed race-based rules and legislation and voting prohibitions to keep people dispossessed and disenfranchised. Absolutely true. But that's not America's original sin. That was done at the local level. It's not America's sin. It's a sin committed by Americans, but it's not America's sin. Anyway. Children are gentle and kind from birth. I know I have. Um, Oxford School Sheet, I know. He was born with any sense of morality and have to learn as they get older, so his parents need to teach them. Yes. Suspect that all people want is... Okay, so I think I've covered all that. C.S. Lewis making a huge comeback. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, we're definitely looking down the rabbit hole and looking through the... Glancing through the looking glass for sure. Slavery is our history as humans. Exactly, Patrick. And to blame it on America is just disingenuous and dishonest. And it's also a distortion. America's abolition movement... Let's oh, speak again. America's abolition movement was strong and robust and is responsible for ending slavery in no small measure. Par Charles Bartley rejects woke culture, or does he? I don't think he rejects it. That's Anthony Brian Logan. So, All right, folks, an hour in. I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you all for being here. really appreciate it, and I'll chat with you later. I'm going to look into this story about Jacob Zuma now, and maybe I'll do a short or something on it. So anyway, thank you so much. Be sure to hit the like button. Appreciate your patronage of the channel. And we'll catch you here for the next one or next video I do. Thanks a lot. I don't know if you guys watched my shorts I did the other, but thank you all so much. God bless and take care. All right.